Colombian cartels have had a profound impact on both local and global scales, showcasing a dark facet of human enterprise characterized by illicit trade, violence, and corruption. Notably, Pablo Escobar, often seen as the epitome of drug lords, founded the metal and cartel in Colombia and, at his height, was one of the wealthiest men in the world. His cartel engaged in extreme violence to maintain its operations and dominance, creating a climate of fear and instability. The effects on Colombian society were profound, leading to rampant crime and a strained relationship with the United States, as intervention efforts were required to curb the drug menace. Wak and El Chapo Gaza men, although primarily connected to the Sinaloa cartel in Mexico, underscores the complicated nature of global drug trafficking networks, had significant interactions with Colombian cartels. His collaboration with these groups for the transshipment of cocaine across the Americas illustrates the expansive international network of drug trafficking. Colombian cartels supplied cocaine while El Chapo's network ensured efficient distribution, amplifying the reach of these illicit substances. The overlap of their activities, you. These criminal organizations, with the Metal N and Kali cartels being some of the most infamous, have engaged heavily in the cocaine trade, becoming some of the wealthiest and most powerful entities in the world during their peak. The legacy of figures like Pablo Escobar and their nefarious operations have left indelible marks on Colombia's social, economic, and political landscapes. The ongoing operations of prominent cartels like the Cali Cartel, which opted for a more corporate, like, and less overtly violent approach compared to the metal and cartel, perpetuated the cycle of poverty and crime. Illustrate the different strategies in drug smuggling. Despite reduced violence from certain actors, the impacts remain destructive, including corruption at unprecedented levels within government and law enforcement in Colombia. Such pervasive influence undermined public trust in institutions and the competition between these cartels and their subsequent fallout often resulted in bloody turf wars, significantly affecting innocent civilians caught in the crossfire. This led to an environment of fear and unpredictability, stymieing the country's development in various sectors. Kidnappings, extortions, and assassinations were rampant, dissuading investment and fostering economic instability. Tourism in Colombia took a significant hit due to the violent repercussions of narco-trafficking. Despite Colombia's rich cultural heritage and diverse landscapes, these factors dissuaded many potential tourists. The international image of Colombia became closely linked with drug-related violence, overshadowing its potential as a vacation destination. Constant security advisories and negative media portrayals contributed to a significant decrease in tourist arrivals. However, Colombia's tourism sector Eventbia contends with its internal challenges directly linked to the shadows of cartel power the reverberations contribute to global security and health concerns, emphasizing the need for comprehensive and sustained international efforts to combat such pervasive issues. In conclusion, Colombian cartels have left a complex legacy marked by profound societal disruptions and iterative efforts towards recovery and transformation. The shadow of narco-trafficking, catalyzed by figures like Pablo Escobar, and interconnected with international counterparts such as El Chapo poses both direct and indirect consequences on tourism, security, and economic stability. Combating the pervasive influence of drug cartels requires a multifaceted approach that incorporates law enforcement, economic strategies, international cooperation, and social programs. Each country can play a fundamental role in addressing the numerous aspects of cartel operations to safeguard its own interests as well as contribute to global stability. The following 20 paragraphs discuss what countries can do to mitigate and eventually eliminate the problems posed by cartels. First and foremost, strengthening law enforcement. 
is critical. This includes both increasing the presence and capabilities of police forces, as well as enhancing investigative techniques. Robust training programs focusing on anti-drug and anti-terrorism activities can provide officers with the knowledge and skills to more effectively counter cartel activities. Moreover, investment in technology, such as surveillance and data analytics, can significantly enhance how effectively law enforcement tracks and disrupts cartel operations. Second, fostering and preserving the integrity of judicial systems is essential. Corruption often underpins the success of drug cartels, allowing them to evade justice. Countries should adopt stringent anti-corruption measures, including transparency in appointments and operations, significant penalties for corrupt activities, and whistleblower protections. The judicial process must be independent and free from outside influence to ensure fair trials and prosecutions for cartel members. Additionally, international cooperation is paramount in the fight against drug cartels. As cartels operate across borders, collaboration across countries can disrupt supply chain legal immigration channels. Countries can invest in sophisticated border infrastructure and technologies like drones, satellites, and advanced surveillance systems. Cross-border cooperation between neighbors can also optimize border patrol deployments and technical resources. The financial foundations of cartels must be targeted relentlessly. Countries should ensure stringent anti-money laundering regulations are in place, along with rigorous oversight of financial institutions. Tracking financial flows through systemic checks and imposing penalties for complicity in laundering and cripple the financial operation of cartels. Collaboration with global financial watchdogs like the Financial Action Task Force FATF is crucial for comprehensive action. Public awareness campaigns can be instrumental in promoting social resistance to cartel influence. Educating communities about the dangers and social costs of drug trafficking can reduce the allure of cartels, particularly among young populations. Media outlets can play a proactive role in portraying the negative consequences of involvement in drug trade, rather than romanticizing the lifestyle. Rehabilitation programs for addicts are essential for undermining cartel-created markets. Treating drug addiction as a health issue, rather than solely a crime, ensures that those caught in cycles of abuse receive the necessary support to break free. Investments in healthcare infrastructures mental health services, and community support networks must be prioritized to decrease demand for illicit drugs. Developing and maintaining strong political will is perhaps one of the most critical elements. Fighting powerful cartels requires leaders that are not susceptible to corruption and who are willing to enact and enforce stringent policies against drug trafficking. Public support for these leaders is crucial which can be built by transparently communicating the risks posed by cartels and demonstrating concrete actions taken against them. Addressing root causes of migration linked to cartels contributes significantly to stabilizing affected regions. Many individuals flee their homes due to violence and economic instability perpetuated by cartel activities. By fostering regional stability through diplomatic efforts, developmental aid, and peace-building initiatives, countries can significantly diminish the forced displacement that often overwhelms border security. Strengthening civil society organizations enables better community engagement in the fight against cartels. NGOs, community groups, and local leaders often have valuable insights and reach that governments may lack. Providing support for grassroots efforts and enhancing collaborations between civil entities and governments can lead to more locally informed and accepted measures against drug trade. Countries must also prioritize human rights in their anti-cartel strategies. Heavy-handed approaches that disregard human rights can foster resentment and further destabilization. Adhering to international human rights standards ensures that counter-narcotics efforts do not contribute to additional harm and maintains global support, 
and cooperation. Fence the conditions that allow prisons to become cartel hubs. Often, incarcerated cartel leaders continue to operate with impunity from prison. Improvement in prison management, reducing overcrowding, separating cartel members from general populations, and enforcing strict surveillance measures can mitigate this issue. International committees can provide best practices and oversight to help standardize these efforts. Furthermore, diplomatic engagement with countries that are primary sources or transit points for illicit drugs can effectively disrupt supply chains. Bilateral and multilateral agreements focusing on crop substitution, eradication programs, and shared border security initiatives can ameliorate opportunities for cartels to thrive. Public investment in urban development can significantly reduce the lure of cartels in cities most affected by poverty and crime. Better housing, public services, and recreational opportunities give citizens viable alternatives to engagement in illicit activities. Social equity programs that ensure marginalized communities benefit from such development can effectively curtail cartel recruitment. Technological innovation in detecting and removing online cartel activities, including digital forms of smuggling and communication, should not be overlooked. Cartels increasingly use encrypted communications, online marketplaces, and cryptocurrencies to facilitate their operations. Cybersecurity measures and tracing digital financial practices can break modern operational capacities of these groups. Legislation plays a critical role in dismantling cartels. Countries need adaptive and strict legal frameworks that offer law enforcement robust and clear avenues to prosecute cartel members effectively. Reviewing and updating laws to keep pace with cartel methods ensures that legal loopholes cannot be exploited. Investment in intelligence sharing methodologies domestically can augment collaborative counter-narcotics measures. Departments and agencies within a country must work cohesively without bureaucratic friction. Integrating intelligence bureaus, cross-department training, and central databases can enhance internal efficiency against cartel surprises. Lastly, public health approaches that address volatility incurred by drug addiction are paramount. Countries should not only treat addiction, but also manage public sentiment and recovery support downstream effects of drug abuse. Rehabilitating environment improves broad-based social stability and compounds cartel disruptions. These multi-layered and comprehensive strategies reinforce the crucial standpoint that dismantling cartel influences is not restricted to unilateral measures. It is embedded fundamentally in cooperative, judicial, economic, and social reforms collectively steered by both national initiatives and global currents of mutual support. If you find any information in this broadcast, kindly subscribe to this channel so that we can bring you more like this one.